Hello Forex fans, it is Rob here from Explominate here with Lord of Rigel, a game that has been in development for some seven years, I think, where they originally had it in Unity and then decided to transfer it over to Unreal. And that coupled with, you know, COVID and a few other things has delayed the development of this game quite significantly. But it is finally here. And, you know, I'll say this, right? This game has a very solid foundation. It doesn't necessarily feel like a complete game yet, and it shouldn't because it's going into early access here on October 4th. But the the bones of it, right? Like the, the foundation, like I said, feels pretty solid. And if they can work on maybe making the game a little bit more eventful and interesting in that, you know, like you'll see, I'm gonna play it and we're gonna just talk about it as I go through it. But I'm pretty sure that if they can get through and make the, like the the world more like the universe feel more alive that we're going to be in a really good place with this game as a, as a very solid base product so i'm going to try something i haven't tried before i've never done the katraxi here i love the silak because they are i, I just love ocean-based races but you know and i've tried the air because i'm also a very big industrial you know we have you know these all kind of fit into the same like archetypes as some of the Master of Ryan 2 races do, you know, like, I mean, they even kind of look like them in some cases, like the Xantus clearly look like Darlocks, you know, your Tharn clearly look like Sakura, you know, and they have a lot of the same benefits as the, as the same, you know, like the, the corresponding races do from Master of Ryan 2, but I haven't tried as the Katroxy, which are probably the Mershon. Let's see, they have, a, yeah, they have ship attack, so... That is definitely a Mershon thing, right? And their primary color is red. It's pretty bright. I like it. Let's do it. And you can do spiral galaxies, cluster galaxies. Oh, I thought there was more than that. But we'll do spiral. Actually, we'll do cluster. And then we'll do a medium-sized map, which is going to have 64 different stars. And an age of average. All this else, we're going to have to do the rest as average. Difficulty, we'll do average too. I don't know why it's on easy. But we're going to go ahead and accept, and we're going to play through probably a few episodes to kind of show you what this game is all about. What do you guys think? The Rigelans altered the natural course of evolution on Atra. The Katraxi clans built great cities and waged even greater wars. Then the Emperor discovered the secrets of the Rigelans and split the atom. Bringing the clans to heal, the Emperor then turned to the stars. The time had come to build a vast armada. Warriors were conscripted from even the smallest clans to forge the greatest army ever seen. Atra was stripped bare of raw resources to fuel the Emperor's vision. But the galaxy was ripe for conquest with infinite worlds to plunder. Even the Lords of Rigel would know the fury of the Katraxi. I'm not sure how I feel about the, you know, the AI voiceover work there. I'm hoping that they invest in, like, just even a decent... I I'll do it. <laughs> Rama Studios, if you want me to, I'll do it. I'll do the voiceover work for you guys. But yeah, that... Uh, oh, wow, there's not much here. So... We're in a cluster. So the one thing that I have a hard time with is the map looks good, right? Like you zoom out, you see the map. It looks really good, but it's very difficult to figure out what stars are. That's a star. That's a star. But you can see how hard it is in contrast to the background to see like where your stars are, right? And that can be a little frustrating. That's one thing that I definitely think needs to be addressed. But with that, I believe that this very early beginning of the game is going to feel really See, I can't even move. I don't even have anywhere to go. Everything's out of range for me. This is an awful start. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and start again. And I'm leaving this in here because I want the developers to see that you can have an awful start like that. That's not a fair start. No one wants that start. So let's see if we got a better start this time. Okay, let's see. It looks like I'm going to be close enough. No, again. Destination out of fuel range. All right, we're going to come back. We're going to try 
So it looks like the clusters definitely work against you in a way that's a little frustrating. So we'll come over here and do spiral because I know for a fact those end up doing a lot better. I've been playing spirals. I've never see how we, we are much closer. This is the kind of thing that you want to see. You want to see some early, you know, star systems that are close enough to get to. So definitely a thing with clusters. So if you're watching developers, then I would suggest maybe uh, adjusting that a bit. Anyways, I'm leaving that in there only because I want you guys to see like the full state of what early access will be like, right? So we're going to go ahead and we've also had the opportunity to, to select our research. The research tree isn't anything particularly unique or, I mean, if I'm going to be honest, exciting, but it's, it's all there, right? And it's actually pretty long and detailed. So you can choose one of these texts per topic here. And it comes all the way down to here where you get to the to the behemoth uh, construction and then you start working towards like advanced techs through here. So, yeah, again, nothing is particularly I mean, I'm not saying this in a way that's rude or mean. Nothing is particularly inspired, right? It feels very derivative of Master Bryant 2. But I'm hoping that with this foundation of a very derivative game, they can make something unique and, and fun. You know, like if there were unique texts to each of these races, that would be great. If there were events that occur or maybe some sort of like, you know, spatial anomalies or something that are going to make the game feel a little more unique. Again, this is going into early access, so there's a lot of time to address some of these issues, and I'm hoping they do. One thing I'm really a big fan of is that they have an auto turn until next event button, which is freaking great because there are times where there's going to be you know basically there's gonna be times where there's basically a lot of dead turns and you don't want to have to like sit there and hit turn 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 and that's the case with almost any forex game so I appreciate that they're willing to they, they added that I think that's a really big important thing anyway so we've this is our first star system that we've we've uh, scouted out here so we can zoom out to see a that the planet bodies actually rotate around the star here which I like a lot it's a nice little visual element that I really appreciate. And you can look over to the left to see what it is that each of these have here. First, you can tell what kind of star it is, and then it shows you like the various different planet bodies. Most of them here are gas giants, but there are a couple that are serviceable. And then we can come over here to Delta Valorium, and we've got a medium Terran. That's actually gonna be a great planet to start our first colony on. So we'll send our colony ship there, and as we do that, we'll maybe, nope, not going to send that one, but we can send this one. There we go. Once we get here, we'll be able to send that fleet there. Very good. So now that we have the colony ship here, we're going to go ahead and hit colonize, and we're going to go to our Terran planet here and colonize it. So admittedly, the, the cutscenes aren't my favorite thing ever. You know, I, I mean, they're pretty bare bones, right? And I'm not going to sit here and, and complain about them because I don't ever watch cutscenes anyways. But, you know, in some ways, production values are pretty great. You know, like they're they're definitely above average for an indie game. And in other ways, they kind of feel exactly that. They feel like an indie game. So, and that, there's nothing wrong with that, right? As long as the gameplay is good, I don't care about the presentation. But, you know, I think, like I said, that there's there's some work to be done, even if the uh, the, the bones are good. So... We've got Delta Valorum here. We can take a look at our empire here. This is great. This is a great screen. I like it. We can come over here and look at our capital and start to look at what we need to do. We'll build housing because housing is going to help us. Wait, why does it say that still? Okay, housing. It converts production to population growth, which is good because we want our people. We want more people. The more people we have, the more we're going to be able to output. And we only have 7 out of 12 of the population cap here. So we want to make sure that that's working towards you know converting more people so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing over here and looks like there's no production at all here so yeah there's no production yet let's go ahead and and change that so it looks like we're still good i don't think we're gonna we're not gonna die out we'll get some housing going and then we'll work towards farms which we've got here as soon as we get that researched so we'll go ahead and hit and key. Oh, wait, you know what we should do? We should stop. 
We'll stop that because we want to send... Oh. I don't know how to stop it. Maybe I don't know how to stop it. We're going to send these guys here. And start to continue our exploration of our area. So, Delta Valorum has a population increase. I realize I don't like this screen, edge screening, edge scrolling. That's what it is, edge scrolling. So let's see if I can turn that off. Mouse edge scroll, there we go. I like WASD better, so yeah, there we go, good. All right, now we can WASD it all day. All right, construction complete at Delta Valorum. Housing, we got housing on both, so hopefully that means we'll start to see more population growth, especially once we get the hydroponic farms going. And there's zero turns left there. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and convert people to food. All right, so we have the Galactic News Network. Again, nothing spectacular, but, you know, it's it's serving a purpose here. So the population of Atra 2 is experiencing a fertility explosion. A lost colony was contacted on Morales Prime, rejoining the Eternal Empire. What the hell is the Eternal Empire? Oh, us. It's us. And we just gained a... Oh, all right. I'll take it. A free colony. And it's a decent colony, too. It's, it's at a... Hell yeah, that was a great turn of events for us. All right. I have not seen that event, and I'm glad we got it because it works for us. So there's three of 12 people there. That's fantastic. And so housing's being built pretty much everywhere right now, which is good because we want to continue our population growth. And then once we start to, you know, have things that we can build, we can start to switch over the population to a more industrial focus. Well, now actually, so, so Fleet, Vermilion Claw, Explore Dira, there's nothing there. We can start moving these guys here because we'll have the, the range to get there. And we'll go back to letting it auto turn for us. All right, let's clear some of these guys out. So we'll go ahead and see what's going on here. We've got nine of 12 now at Ap uh, Atra. There's nothing we can build other than trade goods, so we're going to continue to let that be the case. Morales Prime increase. All right, so everybody's increasing their population, which is good. And looks like they've also done their housing, so we have nothing. Oh, they're just going to continue to build housing. I wish I could right-click to get rid of those, but we cannot. So that'll be my first request. <laughs> There's actually, I've got a few. I can't say that's my first request. All right, great. We've made our first contact with the Xantus. All right, so let's go ahead and say hi. All right, so Prime is on. If the Eternal Empire seeks secrets, we can reveal them for a fee. All right, so maybe we ask for a trade treaty, a 5% trade treaty, maybe a 10% trade treaty. Let's try that. Give us 26 BCs and we'll accept your proposal. I don't see where my BCs are here, but I assume that I have them. In fact, yeah, I did, but it would have been nice to see what we have here. So we've met them there at Aji. Leo, we can look at to see what's going on. Nothing particular. I wish I could right click to exit this, this screen. Instead, I have to either push B or hit the galaxy button. I like right-clicking to leave menus and leave screens. That's something that Amplitude started with, and I really, I really like it. So we're going to cancel this. What we're going to do is we're going to actually come back over to Atra here, Atra, and we're going to build a... That's so much easier to do it the other way. I should have done it the other way. We're going to build an outpost ship, and we're going to try to develop an outpost here at Leo so that we can continue our exploration here. We might even do two. Now that I think about it, we'll do two so that we can also go westward if we're looking at the map. Like north, southeast, west, or north, <laughs> west, southeast. So we want to go west here this way with the outpost ship. I don't know if I can make it actually, but we will at least start here and make our way down that way. All right, so Morales Prime population increase. We're continuing to build bodies. That's what I'm gonna call it, build bodies. And how did I zoom out? I did not, all right. 
there we go. So we've built the hybrid, or we've researched hydroponic farms now. Let's go with optical computer. No, let's not do that. I'm at research laboratory. Let's set that up. And then we can also queue up, I believe. I, I feel like, nope, we cannot queue up. It's a one at a time thing. All right, that's fine. So I don't want to do this. I, sh I hate that way. We're going to go ahead and queue up a hydroponic farm here. A hydroponic farm here. In fact, we're going to take the housing out of this equation now. Click to remove from queue. I've done that. Hopefully that's going to work next time. Hydroponic farm. Why won't it let me click to remove from queue? What are you doing to me? Why are you doing that to me? Let's see if maybe I just need to do one more turn. All right, we'll come back over here. We'll try to remove things. There, that's weird. It really just needed a turn. And then we'll come back over here and do the same thing to this one. And then we'll have hydroponic farms going with these so that we can have more food. And the population will continue to rise. And we can support that population. So that's, that's important as well too, right? So we continue. And the outpost ship is complete. We'll take it to Leo and we're gonna build an outpost there. All right, your source for news. The fertility boom has Astros ended. That sucks. It was good while it lasted. We made bunches of people. I pushed that button. You do auto turn. That's the deal, man. All right, well, let's go here and let's see if we can actually take it here. Can we take it here? We can, very good. All right, so we'll get the auto turns going. And I don't think I've seen this. I don't know what this is. Is this the outpost ship reaching somewhere? <laughs> I don't. Uh, probe of unknown design is encountered by internal force at Seta Delta. Seti Delta. Setai. We report you decide. New mineral deposit discovered. Asher. Oh, look at that. Man, I'm getting a lot of good good news here. Oh, wow. All right. So, a Von Neumann drone. Um. Engage forces. I don't, it doesn't let me do that. Select system for combat. I have done that. And do that. Select fleet for combat. <laughs> oh my god. Don't do this to me. I don't know how to get out of that. Can we exit? Nope. It won't let me engage in combat or auto or close or anything. Escape hotkey. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit auto resolve. Uh, it really legitimately won't let me do it. So I can't even exit out of it. That is a little frustrating. So, okay, click to select system for combat. There we go. We've selected the system for combat. Click to select fleet for combat. It will not let me select that. There, it has done that now. Auto, engaging combat, auto close. Those are not, none of them are choosable. So, how do I do this? Maybe I do this and then this? No. All right, well, you know what I'll do is I'm going to wrap this episode up from here because clearly I have reached a point where I have to alt F4. <laughs> so hopefully there's a like a, a save from the, the turn before. And if not, then there hopefully will be a save that I can get back to and I'll play forward until we're about this point. 
and then you know figure out what the hell happened here but yeah i mean again this is early access right i don't i don't want you guys to judge us yet i know it is a little frustrating to see something like this i mean i feel like i'm doing everything right here von Neumann fleet i'm like clicking on things there's no defender i mean I, nothing is making this it was initially i saw it one of them was i think auto was blue but the second i clicked on things to see what was going on it went away so i wonder what i did to to screw this to, this up here a little bit but whatever little combination of clicks i did managed to make this kind of soft lock here so i will come back so stay tuned for episode two where i hopefully will get through this and we'll continue on playing it like I said, for a few episodes, to kind of see what it's like, and that's uh that's what it's that's what it's gonna be. That's what it's gonna be. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching, Ralph Mix Filmmates. Until next time, keep exploring. <laughs>